Hello and namaste, my beautiful friends. I'm Jill Loftus of New Wit Astrology. Welcome to your planetary energy forecast for the week of May 29th, 2023. Shockingly enough, this month has um, roared on by and we are stepping into the month of June. Keep in mind that this is still a white lights shields up kind of week, even though, you know, we're starting to let go of the Pluto influence as much because it's backing up, right? Heading back into Capricorn. But we still have this tense arrangement of planets between the God of War, Mars, in Leo, feeling very, you know, empowered and, and a clash with the North Node and Jupiter, which have come together and meet precisely at three degrees of Taurus this week. Now that also picks up that square to the south node, which is across the sky in Scorpio. And so this is an energy that can create tension, conflicts, arguments, issues with resources, issues with money, issues with pride, issues with um, authority, or people who wanna be in charge or calling the shots, right? So um, it's just a week to not be super argumentative. Um, we are, you know, we, we are, coming through the weekend and into the week with also a tense configuration between the sun, um, which has been um, in a square configuration with Saturn. And so, you know, the sun in Gemini has all these ideas, right? And Saturn in Pisces is like, well, I, I, don't just talk about it. Show me what you're going to actually do. So um, there are lots of creative uh, sparks coming up this week too, because there's going to be a beautiful harmony between Venus and Neptune. So, um, you know, Venus is still in Cancer, touchy-feely, right? Neptune is in Pisces. So that beautiful water element, adding water, I've been saying this for weeks now, but truly adding water right now to your life helps. So go for a float, soak in a bath, um, you know, get a, a, borrow a kayak, go to the river, go to the ocean, um, get in your tub with your salt water, get in the shower and visualize rinsing off any tension or upset. Or keep in mind, because the nodes of the moon are involved, there's a lot of faded kind of stuff going on. These like cos kind of cosmic um, crossroads that we're at, right? And there can be this big amplification of desire for material things or material comfort because of the North Node coming together with Jupiter in the sign of Taurus. And so uh, watch out for shadow Taurus um, traits like greed, um, maybe a holding on to anger or upset or holding grudges. Those are all negative tar and things. Um, overdoing um, anything that's uh, yummy or delicious. Um, it's a great time to renovate your playlist. Taurus loves music and, and uh, you know, music has a great, huge impact on us vib vibratorily, right? A great time for that. It's a great time to, you know, go volunteer at your local organic garden. Even if you, you know, maybe couldn't afford a CSA this year, maybe you contact them and say, hey, what if I, you know, come out and give you, you know, four hours in the, in the field? Could I get a, a bag of something fresh and wonderful? You know, just really reconnect. Um, foraging, I've been a real big advocate of foraging and I think learning to forage, understanding what we consider to be weeds or um, invasives that you can actually eat. This is a great way to manage this energy, okay? So let's hop into the specifics for the week. We start out on um, the 29th. We've got the moon in Virgo. We've got another, a few moon, moon voids again this week. It voids at 5.46 in the morning till 10 41 in the morning, uh, Eastern standard time. So just watch on the 29th, um, that Virgo moon, you know, it, it's not going to like that, like floaty feeling, right? So you're not going to feel like you can get a lot of traction in the morning, but that's a great time to commune with nature. Go, go enjoy your outdoors time. Um, you know, because Virgo is an earth sign and it is going to be sending some really nice energy to, um, Pluto, which is really nice. All right. On the 30th, we have a Libra moon trying the sun in Gemini, which I love for social experiences. So maybe if you wanted to get together with some friends or you've been thinking about like, you know, just inviting somebody to lunch, this is an excellent vibe for this. This is another big long moon void day, 10.53 a.m. to 7.45 p.m. That's like all day. <laughs> so again, not a great time for critical thinking, um, signing contracts, commitments, things of that nature, but a lovely time for inspiration, for writing, uh, you know, for, for magical experiences and for meditation. All right. Um, 
you do have that Libra moon uh, once it, it, it gets to the 7.45 p.m. time frame. It moves into Scorpio and is going to square to Pluto. So beware of passive aggressive behaviors that evening. On June 1st, woohoo, Mercury's out of shadow, which, you know, it's been quite a long retrograde. Um, but that is also the day that the North Node and Jupiter precisely meet at three degrees of Taurus. So if you three degrees of anything in your chart, really pay attention. There could be an amplification of some type or an over, a desire to overcommit or something of that nature. Um, all right, and then the Neptune Venus begins that trine, um, which keeps up basically until she moves in to Leo on the 5th of June. So enjoy that gorgeous connection. It's very romantic, very inspirational, fantastic for writing and, um, you know, making music and, you know, art and just the sensuous side of things. I really love it. Um, good for, I think, beautifying the home too, because it's in Cancer. We have another moon void on the first. It's from 8.51 p.m. to 1.03 a.m. Might be more relevant for my West Coast friends. And then um, the precise trine of the Venus and Neptune occurs on June the 2nd, so lovely. Um, there is a Scorpio moon amplifying the, the big uh, uh, angular energy between Mars and the South Node and that uh, connection of Jupiter with the North Node. So uh, a lot of intense emotions and feelings, um, some of the darker side of, of things. So try to keep it, um, keep yourself grounded through that. Our full moon for this month is on the third at 13 degrees, 17 minutes, the sign of Sagittarius. Um, it's sextiles to Pluto, trines Mars and Leo, squares the Saturn and Pisces. This is a great cord cutting moon. All right, so figure out where Sagittarius, mid-degrees of Sagittarius are for you and ritualize. Um, it's at 11.42 p.m., so it's in the evening. So either stay up late or in the morning, go ahead and do your ritual cord cutting. Um, Sagittarius, as a general rule, represents um, learning, traveling, um, their philosophers, prophets, uh, professors, teachers, writers, publishers. This is the sign of... Um, of travelers, right? So it could be that you need to release an old goal that relates to those things. Maybe you used to teach something and it's time to let go of that and move on to something else. Maybe, you know, you're switching up your travel bucket list or you wanted to learn this language, but it's time to move on to the other one. Perhaps you have some old uh, people that influenced you, a teacher, um, a spiritual leader, someone who um, guided you in some way, but it's time to let go of them. It's time to let go of that connection, right? It's time to move on. Something has come to fullness here. So excellent cord cutting moon. I really love it. Um, and then we have on the fourth Mercury meeting Uranus in the sky, again, in the sign of Taurus, electric ideas, sudden synchronistic events, really tap in on June 4th. I would probably say even say late on the third in fourth, fifth, tap in and be like, you know, see what the urges or promptings take you because magical things could happen. So definitely have your synchronicity goggles on, your magical thinking and gear for the meeting of Mercury Uranus. Be also careful with technology and things like that. You may be like, Jill, you told me that Mercury was direct. Well, when Mercury, Mercury meets Uranus in the sky, it might not feel like it's direct. You might have some technological difficulties or challenges. Um, so keep that in mind. All right, um, let's check out the tarot. I apologize, I didn't have the tarot last week. It's been a wild um, time for me personally, and I know for a lot of my clients as well. I hope you're managing the energy successfully, um, that you're making the changes and adaptations, you're sensing, you're feeling the changes and preempting them. You know, surfing these energies is just kind of like surfing waves, right? You have to kind of like see where to position yourself so you can take advantage of the flow and keep things um, moving in a direction that feels right for you. All right, if this is useful and helpful, please comment below. I appreciate it. I, I really enjoy hearing from you. It helps encourage me to film every week. <laughs> um, and I'll see you in the tarot. Bye. All right. Welcome to the tarot for the week of May 29th, 2023. We're gonna do this Lotus tarot as always. All right, two different ways to work with the energy of this week. We've got the full moon vibe. We're still dealing with 
this Mars square, some tension, some turning points, and also some, you know, groovy Venus stuff. So, hey, let's see what, uh, what the tarot says. Lots of shuffling here. All right. So we start off with the past. And in the past, there's something that you really wanted to do. Okay. You've an idea. You start to take practical steps. You're very excited about something you're going to spend time, money, and energy on. And then you, you are really wanting this sense of you know, this is Venus and Cancer, right? Home, hearth, um, you know, really finding a stable, um, stable home life, a good home environment, health for your family and yourself. But the environment that you're actually in, right? This is more you, your attitude, your environment is that you feel like something's ending. There's a failure, um, uh, you know, a crash and burn situation, but that is necessary because it's leading you to your future. So just let it go. Cut the cord with that Sagittarius full moon. All right. And everything comes together and the hermit is here. The hermit says pull back. So yes, there are some lovely social aspects this week, but you really need to find this strength within yourself. You need to um, meditate. You need to tune in. Very important. Okay, key card of the future, the hanging man. So there are going to be delays. Things are not going to happen as rapidly as you would like, even though Mercury is moving out of shadow, right? So you may feel like you're in this somewhat uncomfortable position, but it is productively uncomfortable, so keep that in mind. Modifying that, those two opposite forces in play, one is that you are studying, learning, preparing, gaining skills for your future. Or, Emperor, it's time to call some shots and make some changes. All right. Now, the near future key card, the detail is that you need to make some decisions. There's too many things out there. There's too many options. You need to pick some directions. All right. The modifiers for these are King of Swords. So if you're preparing for something new, learning, gaining skills, you have to be logical in your approach. If you're ready to make some changes and really move forward with the Emperor card, you've got to pick a direction. All right, so it's not enough that you narrow things down. You have to narrow it way down. Like there's some kind of specific direction being chosen in these, um, with, these, uh, with these decisions that you're making. Now, paired over here with the King of Swords, we've got the moon. You don't have all the information yet, okay? So even though you're needing to be logical, you don't know everything yet, okay? So keep that in mind, right? You can approach with logic, but just assume that there's more going on than you're aware of. And then over here with this Two of Wands is the lovers. You, the perfect thing is there, all right? So... Final, final, final um, possible solutions. So on the eight of pentacles, we've got the nine of pentacles as well. There is this possibility that you really can be responsible for your own care and keeping, your own financial success. Call your own shots. Wow. Just, it's definitely like the vibe for this week is like, you've got to make your some decisions. Over here on the side with the emperor, we have the world, assurance of success. This is some big, big, big picture visionary stuff. All right. And then over here with the nine of pentacles, we've got the seven of so at six, six of swords. You're moving in the right direction, right? So be, know that the, if you calm, okay, the changes that are coming are moving you in the right direction. Paired with the world, we have the page of cups, some emotional fulfillment piece here as well. Wow. So this is really looking like a great week. It looks like either way to work with the energy is very, very positive, but you have to pull back a little bit, right? Hermit, hermit and hanging man, right? It's just like this kind of liminal space, but you're either working on something for your future or, you know, and you're ready to go either way, changes, decisions, narrowing down a focus needs to be made. 
You can do this with logic and intuition and really just kind of feel into it, that mix of logic and intuition that leads to independence and uh, a more uh, centered, balanced life. Or you definitely narrow things down. You pick a direction. You find the perfect thing. You succeed. And it fills you up emotionally. Well, that's a pretty groovy little week, isn't it? All right. Uh, there has to be some productivity that comes from all these squares that we've been managing, right? All right, my friends, have a wonderful week and I'll see you next week.